Hey, what's up? I have my math test tomorrow. Exponents. It's so hard. Well, take a break. What I don't get is, why should one bother about exponents at all? Allow me to explain with an example. I just made a deposit of $500. Do you know how much I will make at the end of 8 months at 2% interest rate compounded monthly? The expression looks like this. I have to keep multiplying this term with itself 8 times over to get to the answer. Isn't it a bit too unmanageable? Now compare with the same expression written using exponents. See how simple it becomes now. How interesting! Absolutely. In a multiplication operation, say 3 times 5, you are basically doing repeated addition. In cases when you deal with exponential operation, all you are doing is repeated multiplication of the base as many times as the power or the exponent. Cool. Where else is this used in the real world? Almost every place you can think of. You use exponents when depicting exponential growth, say of population over time or spread of a pandemic. Exponential decay, say relationship of sound intensity with distance. Measuring power of an earthquake. In a pH scale to show how acidic or alkaline a substance is. It is used in scientific notations to make sense of extremely huge numbers or expressing very small decimal values. Very exciting. Tell me a bit more. Sure. As I mentioned earlier, exponents is just a simple way to show repeated multiplication of a number by itself. For example, the number 2 multiplied by itself 6 times is written in exponent form as 2 raised to the power 6. This number here is called the base and this is the exponent. In other words, the base B signifies the number you multiply. The exponent M tells you how many times you multiply the base. So 2 raised to the power 6 is nothing but 64. You may wonder why I am showing the number 1 here. Only to describe one of the many rules of exponents. Let me explain. Let's say we replace the exponent 6 with a 0. This means there is no base to multiply by itself. The answer as a result is 1. So when you take any variable with exponent as 0, you get 1 as a result. This is called the 0 exponent rule. We will see some more rules, but remember, for every exponent rule, the base cannot be 0. Now let's take an expression where the exponent is 2. b raised to the power 2 is also simply called square of b or b squared. Similarly, b to the power 3 is b cubed. Let's now multiply two expressions which have the same base. 6 raised to the power 8 multiplied by 6 raised to the power 3 or 6 cubed. Denoting this in form of repeated multiplication gives us 6 multiplied by itself 11 times, which is 6 raised to the power 11. 8 plus 3 is 11. The result is nothing but addition of the individual exponents. In the variable form, this is b raised to the power m multiplied by b raised to the power n is equal to b raised to the power m plus n. This is called the product rule. Let us observe what happens if we divide these two expressions. Again, writing this in form of a repeated multiplication and solving gives us 6 multiplied by itself 5 times. This is same as solving by subtracting the exponent from denominator from exponent from numerator. Hence we get a new rule b raised to the power m divided by b raised to the power n is equal to b raised to the power m minus n. We now have what's called the quotient rule. In this equation, let's see what happens if m is equal to 0. From the zero exponent rule, we know b raised to the power 0 is 1. So we get 
b raised to the power minus n is equal to 1 divided by b raised to the power n. We just derived the negative exponent rule. Now let's complicate the expressions a little bit. 7 raised to the power 4 raised to the power 3. Well, if you have followed the fundamentals so far, this is not as complicated as it looks, isn't it? That's a lot of 7s, 12 to be precise. 4 multiplied by 3 is 12. Hence, this is same as multiplying the two exponents to get the answer. In variable form, this becomes b raised to the power m raised to the power n is equal to b raised to the power m times n. This is called the power rule. Now let's introduce another base variable in the expression keeping the same exponent value. 3 squared multiplied by 4 squared. The result is 9 multiplied by 16 which is 144. But if we multiply 3 by 4 first and then apply the exponent, we have 12 squared which is also 144. a times b raised to the power m is equal to a raised to the power m times b raised to the power m. Simple, isn't it? This proves another rule which is called power of the product rule. Similarly, 6 raised to the power 3 or 6 cubed divided by 2 cubed is equal to 216 divided by 8. The answer is 27. But had you just divided the basis first and then applied the exponent, you would have 3 raised to the power 3 or 27. Same result a raised to the power m divided by b raised to the power m is same as a divided by b the whole raised to the power m. This is called the power of quotient rule. Now if the exponent is a fraction things tend to be a little complicated but nothing we cannot figure out. Let's take an example. 7 raised to the power 3 by 5. By the power of the product rule we saw earlier, this can be written as 7 raised to the power 1 fifth, the whole raised to the power 3. Now if we take this expression and multiply by itself 5 times, which is also the denominator here, we get to apply the product rule we learned earlier. The answer is 7. Hence, 7 raised to the power 1 fifth is nothing but fifth root of 7. This can also be written in radical form as seen here. The base goes here and the denominator becomes the index of the radical. So, we have the answer of 7 raised to the power 3 by 5 as fifth root of 7 the whole raised to power 3. By the power of product rule, this expression can also be written as 7 cubed raised to the power 1 fifth. Applying same principles, this is nothing but the fifth root of 7 cubed. Hence, in variable form, b raised to the power m upon n is nth root of b the whole raised to m or nth root of b raised to m. We just derived the fractional exponent rule. Thanks so much. I guess I'm now going to ace my test on exponents. Sure you can. You have all what you need for this topic.